Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today, we are reading for the overview of Aries season. Aries season will be from March 20th through April 19th. Now, when I am doing the overview, the big reading, and I look at this as kind of like the chapters in our lives, um, where the general readings are more of the paragraphs of our lives or the pages of our lives. So, when I am reading for the longer readings, I use a bunch of decks. I am using my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards for the main message. I will then go to my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. That helps to provide some clarity. It kind of fills in the gaps. We then go to my Osha Zen Tarot cards. And what that does is that helps to give us words of advice. My Archangel Power Tarot cards, again, Radley Valentine. And I really like how they kind of summarize everything. We then will be going to another Radley Valentine deck. And I've been, I did this, I think, last time. We'll pull one from my Angel Tarot cards. This is a little wordy, um, but it's got a really nice message. It's very gentle, okay? But the message, I like the messages. Um, I will um, use, during the beginning part, this introduction, I will also pull from my writer tarot cards. It's one of the more, ori it's one of the more original tarot decks, okay? Okay. Then I will finish with my Emily Anderson crystal deck. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest, okay? Okay. Um, I am an intuitive channeler. What that means is that I open myself to higher power. You know, let whatever the message is come through my mouth. My job, just deliver it for whoever might need to hear it. And I do love hearing that the message was delivered. So, like I said, it may or may not resonate. And again, you know, that's great. That's okay. Take what you like. Now, let's go through a little bit of the overview of what Aries season is about. This is just kind of the planetary movements and just so you can get a little bit of a um, basic understanding. So on March 20th, Aries season began on 538 and this will all be Eastern Standard Time. It was also, it is also the equinox. Equinox means equal light and day. Now in the Northern Hemisphere, that means it's the spring equinox. And in the southern hemisphere, that is the fall or autumn equinox. And that actually started again on the 20th, but that was like a 537 a.m. So they're really very close to each other. So we're just going to say. Now, something with the, um, you know, I, 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 I go through some of websites. I don't um, watch other readers. I don't watch other, you know, horoscopes per se. But I do look at like where planets are and, you know, what time that, you know, they're transitioning or where they're going to be at, right? Um, one of the messages that I picked up that I'm surmising is that, again, this is new start, new beginning, new beginning of the astrological year. So, you know, with the planetary movements, a lot of the messages from sites, and I do post that on my YouTube community, or I post these, you know, sites that I get a little bit of this information from on my Facebook page. I haven't been really active in my Instagram or my Twitter so much, or my Pinterest, but the overall energy is something big's happening, surprise, get ready for some interesting in energy, get ready for some interesting news. Now, is that going to be in your personal life? It could be. Is that going to be in the overall general, you know, world, the life of the world, it could be that too. The thing is that no matter what goes on in the world, we still have to live our own lives and we still have to make our own choices as much as we can make those choices. You know, so much influences us and, you know, and so much, you know, we, we are held to, we are held and I'm getting conscription, you know, conscription, yeah, we are held to a certain, um, standard just because you know if you want to have a mortgage if you you know have a mortgage or rent or it, you know we we have to pay our rent we have to you know roof over our heads food in our mouth so there is certain things that um you know we have to comply with in order for these things to happen but in some ways you know this is also going to be about you know 
again, I know I talk about it all the time, Saturn in Aquarius, reality versus illusion. And as Saturn gets more and more into Aquarius, and it'll be there for two years, um, we will be seeing more of that. We will be having the choice to see whether that we want to look at the reality or the illusion. Okay? Just letting you know all that. So, um, overall energy, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pull an angel tarot card. And here we go here. Oops. And the pink deck that I said, they're actually guardian angel tarot cards. That's what those are. This is the Angel Tarot cards. Let's see what we might have for the overall energy for Aries. And I have my notes right over here, so that's why I look there too. Because here we go. One, two, and three. As you might know, um, if you follow, um, reverse cards have a really strong energy. So we have three cards face down. First card up. Oh, get busy, get ready, you know, do your work. Sevens. Over, you know, that number is a perfect number. It has a divine meaning. Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, get down to business. Money energy, too. So the overall energy it, um, with this is a lot of the things we've been waiting for, a lot of the things that we've been doing will come to fruition during this time, or at least they will start to pop their heads up. Think of it as the, with the spring, you know, we've planted the seeds and now they're popping up. We do have to nurture these dreams. We do have to nurture them, you know, keep them, you know, keep them watered or however we want to do that. And again, too, I'm talking about keeping our vibrations really, really high as much as we can um, in order for them to grow. So this airy season is about a lot of growth, but it's a lot, you know, and new beginnings, new starts anyway. Seeds well planted, a temporary pause in action, unnecessary worry. Your next card up is the Ace of Air. Now, air energy is our Aquarius. It is our Gemini. It is our Libra. There's going to be all of these energies, all these air signs will be in play um, a little bit this month. Some a little more than the other. Okay? Air is strategic thinking. It is... Um, Making some plans, it could also be hearing news. Now, aces are new beginnings. You can think of those as a one. So, again, a lot of the things we've been working on, a lot of the things we've been planting, a lot of the things we've been started, you know, that we've been wishing and wanting, we should be seeing something, we should be seeing them start to grow. So, this is what's happening in Aries season. Now, brilliant new ideas and inspiration, seeing the truth of a situation. Remember Saturn, I know. I know, <laughs> reality versus illusion. A challenging beginning. And that's, you know, and as you're going to see, nothing's going to be, you know, I have some words that I, you know, during my meditations from higher power, nothing, you know, life isn't easy. Life isn't easy. It is a challenge. It is a journey for us, but it's very worthwhile. Your last card here, six of water. So here we have, now it's interesting that in a fire sign, which is what Aries is all about, um, and remember, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius are all fire signs. They are about, you know, passionate, burning, very determined type of energies here. So we're in Aries. We have our earth energy here. We have our air energy here. And now we have our water energy. Water is Cancer, Libra, and I'm sorry, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. We are finished with Pisces season. It's very emotional. There's a, there's a little bit of romance. There's a little bit of nostalgia here too, okay? Six is the number of man, you know, so kind of like, you know, what is it that we can create? What are What is our illusion? I'm getting what is our illusion? What, are, what do we need to look deeper into? Now, the six of water has a lot of nostalgia in it, too. So it's kind of like you need to see, you know, maybe this is about looking back and seeing the truth of your situation. Anyway, memories from your history or childhood, issues regarding children, romanticizing the past. Okay, so now, like I said, um, you know, I, when I'm doing my meditation, when I'm preparing even, you know, I ask higher power to give me some words, give me some, you know, what I need to share for you. And this one is, um, you know, you know, and I'm, you know, it, it's, it, I'm not going to say, and this is why I really don't watch other readers and I don't read other horoscopes because I don't want to influence what comes through. 
But, you know, as I'm preparing and getting times and stuff, um, you know, I'm sure that there is some of those influences that do seep through. But with higher power, and also, too, I was pulling my guardian angels with this, too, so um, to help me with some of these words. And it's what I got was it's up to you to claim your personal power. No one else will do it for you. No one else will do it for you. Um, give your fear to higher power. Life is to be lived. Let go of in what I call stinking thinking. Okay? And flying high is risky, but so is living. Live and let live. And what that meant to me was, you know what? You know, people, you do what you've got to do, but you let me do what I want to do or what I've got to do. Okay? So, you know, sometimes we can't always do what we want to do, but... It, again, it is live and let live. Now, these two are here. Let's see what we have. And let's go pull one other card. They were sideways, but I'll put them as uh, reversed. And here we go. Let's see. And like I said, this is my writer tarot cards. Now, if we ever get the death card, please don't be afraid of that. It just means something happens very quickly. So something has to end in order for something to begin, and it happens very dramatically and very quickly. So don't ever be afraid of that card. I've had that in my life, and I'm like, oh, no, no, but nobody dies. It's just a situation changes quicker, okay? And sometimes it's a situation we want, but we just didn't want it to change so quick. Okay, your first card here is the king of wands. Now, the king's underlying energy is air energy. And again, we've talked about what air energy is. The overlying energy is fire energy. And I've talked about what fire energy is. The king of wands is taking a look at the whole big picture. Okay? So with this, you know, look at everything. Look at everything. Don't take anything for granted. But don't get so caught up in the small stuff that you forget living, you forget to live your life. Okay, temperance, all about balance. You know, we, you know, we, you know, balance, keeping things, um, keeping things in an evil, even keel. Oh, not evil, even keel. You know, keeping things. Remember your work-life um, balance type of thing, and also to your thoughts, words, mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your intuition keeping things in balance, okay? And that means taking care of yourself during this time, getting the proper rest, eating well, doing the things you need to do. Now, a lot of times, you know, whether you're in spring or autumn, a lot of times we need to look back and say, okay, if we're in spring, maybe it's time for us to, you know, go on that diet. You know, if we're in autumn and we're getting ready for winter time, hey, it is still, you know, there is changes in those habits too. So it's kind of keeping, I'm getting a really um, interest, I'm getting kind of a get out of your, get out of your uh, funk, get out of your, and that's F-U-N-K, get out of your funk, get out of your uh, sweat clothes, you know, because, you know, and, you know, start moving, start moving. Now, yes, you're saying, well, if I'm in my sweat clothes, no, the people that I'm talking to, you've been in your sweat clothes and you haven't been moving. So if you're going to wear the sweat clothes, get moving. Anyway, so airy season, get moving. Again, that would go with um, life is to be lived. Your last card here, okay, and that is reversed. That is the nine of swords. Swords is your... Um, air energy, which we've talked about also, and not, I'm sorry, that's the four of swords, I'm sorry, four of swords, there's a lot of things that have to be let go of, there's a lot of things that you need to um, rethink, there's a lot of things that you need to um, rehash, and yet at the same time also let go of, now fours do have some stability to it, and it's also about organization, now remember too, and I know I talk about this, but Saturn and Jupiter become more and, more and more enmeshed in the Aquarius energies as we go on. So again, keep our vibrations high during this time. All of the planets are direct, and they will be direct until the 27th of April. So this is pushing us forward. There's a node that's retro. I'm not going to get too much into that, but most of the planets are pushing us forward. Aries season is pushing us forward also. Now, couple of things that I thought were important, 
um, was the 21st of March and the 22nd of March. We had, well, the 21st, we had Venus entering Aries, okay? Venus is emotions. Venus is about love, relationships. And as it enters into Aries, it is, you know, it is passionate. It is bringing things up in our emotional states and also in our relationships. And then we have, though, Gem Gemini is trined with Saturn and Aquarius. Um, that is really, that's, okay, Saturn is what, you know, like I've talked about that all the time. And Gemini is about independent thinking. You know, Geminis are very independent thinkers. And they do, you know, they're very quick-witted also. So there's something, just think about that 21st, 22nd, um, you know, it, especially with your relationships, especially with how you are viewing your relationships, okay? Now, we jump down to the 28th of March, and we've got some interesting stuff going on there too. The 28th of March, the moon will be full. It will be in Libra at 6.27 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. Now, it is trine. There is a grand trine with that. Now, that is also, you know, grand trines are very lucky. They're very, um, oh my goodness, what do I want to say about a grand trine? They're very magical in many ways, and they are times for great manifestation. So remember, new moon to full moon, as the moon is waxing and getting bigger, um, you know, that's when we're requesting. Full moon to new moon, as it gets smaller, waning, that's when we let go. The full moon is one of those times where we do it all. You know, we do release, relinquish, request. Release what we don't need anymore. Relinquish, or I'm sorry, release what's holding us back. Relinquish what we don't need anymore. And request the good stuff. And remember, we are, have so much air, um, Aquarius energy, we need to speak it out. So there is going to be, so, you know, the trine, full moon in Libra, it trines with Saturn in Aquarius. Now, remember, Libra is about balance. Libra likes balance. But Saturn, like, you know, Saturn in Aquarius wants to bring things out to you. So there could be a little bit of a, um, you know, there could be a little bit of um, information that comes out or situations that you're like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. But we need that. We need, Libra needed to balance it because people were too, people are, were, you know, too strongly one way. And so this is to balance the other. Now, the Libra is trined with Jupiter, which is also an Aquarius. That's about good fortune. So there could be some changes in fortune for the positive. Okay, that could bring money in also. Then we have Libra trines with Mars in Gemini. And remember, Mars is, you know, is an Aries energy. But, you know, so this is the warrior. This is the, you know, bat, you know going into battle type of energy. But Gemini has you thinking through this. Gemini is kind of like pick your battles. You know, pick your battles, choose wisely. What is it that you really want to go after? So the full moon in Libra is going to be about, you know, sudden, it could be about sudden um, changes, shifts. It will be, it can, it will go towards the positive, though, it, of course, full moons are always a little bit uncomfortable for many of us. Unexpected information, unexpected, um, kind of like, surprise, this is happening. Um, you know, again, too, um, I talk about when, you know, I, I don't, I, I never say to worship the moon, you know, higher power is for who I worship, uh, or, you know, who I connect with, I should say. Um, but a full moon is a divine creation. So I do feel that the energies, well, the energies do scientifically affect us, it affects the world. So it is a good time to make that connection and to put out your energies. Okay, that's where I say release, relinquish and request. Whew. Now, I didn't put a date on this, and I don't know why, but Mercury is, um, Mercury is in Pisces at this time. Um, it's going to be conjunct, conjunct with Neptune, which is also in Pisces, and they're both at 21 degrees, so there's something going on there, and it's going to be either, it's going to be between the 28th and the uh, 3rd of April. I think it was like the 28th through the 31st of March, but I didn't put a date on that. My bad. Anyway, 
it really it connected with me because again um you know mercury is about communications and some you know and neptune and pisces they do you know they do delve into that darker place that darker area so this could be some dark deep you know deep secrets conversations notifications happening but the thing is you know with that full moon again so as things kind of you know um i don't know do we want to say they they get set in motion it could be some of these things are brought to that light okay because you know libra air energy aquarius air energy gemini air energy okay then we go on to april 3rd april 3rd mercury is entering into aries at 11:42 p.m now let's see what we want to say about that now Aries fire sign. I'm going to say, watch what you say. Watch what you talk about. Um, you know, Aries might push you forward and, you know, it, you may you may overpromise. So you may say, sure, I can get that done. And then afterwards, as you're trying to get something done, especially in your work, um, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I said I could get it done, but I didn't know I had to get it done yesterday. So just watch your mouth, watch your watch what you say cuz I do feel that this there's going to be some impulsive type of communication at this time. So let's go on and see what we have here for the 3rd of April when Mercury changes. Here we go. 3 of air. Okay, so 3s have a celestial type of energy. 3 of air um is, you know, is a recovery time. To me, that's the 3 of swords. I look at that as recovering. So this could be one of those times one of, maybe this communication will be where you where you somebody comes back into your life and you need to um you know have a have a really strong conversation about your relationship. But the three of air, that's the three of swords, so it's that heart with those three swords, and everyone's like, no, 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 along with the death card. Put those away, put those away. It is about recovering. It is about healing. It is about um, getting to, you know, getting things out. I'm kind of getting this, excuse me, like you need to regurgitate the um, emotion in order for you to heal again, okay? So that could be vomiting of the mouth, and I don't mean you're going to physically get sick, but it's just like so much stuff just comes out. So, you know, again, I'm going to say be careful a little bit too, because once it leaves, it can never come back, okay? So great sadness, take time to heal, the need to forgive yourself or others. Reverse, let's see what we have here. Nine of fire, nines have that finality, completion energy. We've talked about fire energy. I love her. She is so strong. You know, whether you be male or female, it doesn't matter. She has such great strength. So, um, you know, she. I like to call her the... Um, the dragon tamer or the dragon slayer. Sometimes there are dragons that we need to slay. So this is all about standing firm. You know, okay, so what if you're going to say something, mean what you say and say what you mean, okay? Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. Have courage and believe in yourself. And your last card here, the 10 of earth. Now, I love this. 10's transitional number. Earth is, again, you know, the number that we talked about, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Very solid energy. And I think we have actually, we have actually on the 14th, we actually have Venus entering Taurus. So between, I would say, the 3rd and the 14th, you could see some stabilization in your emotions and in your family life too, Okay. Because this is about a very happy family life, financial security, finding magic in the little things in life. Now, we do come to that new moon. And let's see where my cards are. I have, I know, oh, there they are. We have that new moon in April on the 11th. It is in Aries, and that's at 10.30 p.m. New moons begin new projects, new starts, new, um, new anything, okay? So let's just take one card for the new moon and see what we have here. King of Swords. Okay, so remember the king underlying energy is air, which is swords. Oh, you know, and the swords energy is air. 
okay so this is air air so that um this would be your um again your aquarius your gemini your um libra the king of swords is like the this is the oldest of the decks this is the oldest of the cards and this brings about great wisdom so if this is something that you want if you are planning on starting a new project at this time um, you know, this is a time really think things through. But, you know, and again, too, I'm always saying connect with your higher power, your guardian angel, spirit guide, voice of the universe, your divine archangels, whoever that is for you, because they will guide you. And that is actually where wisdom does help. Wisdom does come is knowing that there is more to more than just you. You know, just thinking that we have all the answers is arrogance. So we don't have all the er the answers but we know how to find many or some of those answers. The King of Swords, though, is, is just, it sees clearly, and I, I get the word crisp. Crisp, you know, so is that, you know, so basically crisp, whoever, I don't know, but that's, I'm getting the word crisp. Okay, I talked about the 14th of April, Venus entering Taurus, which is an Earth sign. I, again, I do feel that that is going to be, you know, that the emotions, are going to start stabilizing more and more and also this will be developing relationships it'll be it'll be really kind of learning what makes other people tick okay and then we come to the 19th of april and taurus season begins and so that will taurus season will begin at 4 34 p.m now let's just pull one from my arc game okay there we go Oh, we got a bunch that just fell out. We're going to do, so let's see what we might have going on for Taurus. We're just going to do these real quick. Knights, underlying energy is fire. Ariel is earth energy. We've talked about that. Basically, in Taurus, there's going to be a lot to accomplish. Get Make a very detailed plan, being watched over by someone kind, trustworthy, understanding, devoted, and funny. So Taurus is coming out already as a lot of this a lot of this stuff has helped us to um, prepare, and now it's time to get busy. And remember, nights are directional. Here we go with the page of fire reversed. Page of fire is follow your passion. You are ready for any challenge. Um, opportunities for excitement and adventure. Gabriel is fire energy. Energetic, brave, optimistic, playful. Underlying energy of a page is earth. Now... We come back to, and again reversed, we come back to King of Michael. Now, King of Michael is the same as the King of Air, okay? So, principled, rational, ambitious, respected. Wisdom and objectivity are important now. Stay in your integrity, a situation that calls for honest and open communication. So, a lot of things that are happening in Aries, they really get moving in Taurus. And our last card is an Archangel energy card, so this is really, really strong. Archangel Azrael, and this is peace. That would be lovely. I would love Taurus. I would love Aries to end with Taurus beginning on a note of peace. That would be so lovely, wouldn't it? Now, Archangel Azrael, so remember Azrael's name. Release the past, and we've talked about a lot of that. There is a more enriching future coming. Let go and let God. Now, one thing before we go on to our other to our individual readings. I love this one and you know, so this is kind of like the end of um so that would be sometime in the end of April to the beginning of well, the end of Aries season to the beginning of Taurus season. I think that would be lovely. But again, it's letting go of that past. It's, you know, there's a lot of healing. Remember that four of swords, three of swords, I think it was, or three. And there goes a card down there, but let's see what we have here. And let me go pick that card up. Excuse me. So what crystal or energy might be good for us? And I should have this too. Um, I don't know that this is it. It just kind of looks like it. <laughs> so anyway, Aragon star clusters earth healing which we need grounding stress relief and vitality so 
We've got a lot of um, energy, so when I was talking about releasing the past, a lot of that has to happen with that Three of Air, which is the Three of Swords. Also, that Six of Water. Now, lots of things happening, lots of really good energy, no matter where we're living. Again, too, I will go back to the words that I, that I heard from Higher Power, and I'm reading it up here. It's up to you to claim your own personal power. No one else will do it for you. Give your fear to your higher power. Guardian angel, your spirit guide, voice of the universe, your divine, your archangel, whoever that is for you. Um, life is to be lived. Let go of stinking thinking. You know, oh, things are never going to get better. Da, da, da. No, we have to put out the positive energies, okay? And, you know, okay, flying high is risky, but so is living. Live and let live. So that's what we've got right now as our overview, and now we will start our individual readings. Hello, my Scorpios, and welcome to Scorpio and Aries season. How are you? Okay, yep, I always, yeah, big stuff happening for you. I feel expansion. I know I always say moving. Expansion. I feel getting bigger, 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 and expanding, expanding for you. Now, I, you know, in the, in the introduction, I talk, I give you all the rules and stuff like that. I also give you an overview of Aries. Um, I talk about the signs and the, you know, just the energies with it. I talk about the court cards also. Um, I did not talk about the underlying energy of Queens. I don't think I did. Queens underlying energy is water. Water is your energy, and also Cancer and, Scor and Pisces, so it's fluid. It's very emotional energy. So want to get that all out of the way so that when we're reading, I won't have to tell you about that. Anyway, three cards face down. All of them are reversed, so this is going to be some strong stuff. I feel enlargement. I feel expansion. So let's see if the cards will show us that. Here we go. First card up. Two of Earth. So twos are some decisions to make. Earth energy, remember, that's very tangible. So it could be, you know, are you going to go to a new job? Are you going to go to a new home? Are you going to go, what's, you know, I'm kind of feeling like rush, 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 rush. So I'm feeling that Aries energy could be very rushed for you. It could be very much, you know, get your roller skates on. Things are going to be happening that maybe you don't feel quite as in control of. It's all good for you, my Scorpios. You actually, you know, you actually find yourself in a better place. Things happen that are supposed to be happening. Higher power, guardian angel, spirit guide, voice of the universe, divine. There is a divine energy pushing you forward, um, you know, that is actually, you know, I'm, and I'm kind of feeling a little bit with the, um, you know, if you go to the beginning, the intro, the Mercury in that with Pisces and Neptune, you know, and you, my Scorpios, love secrets. Well, you don't love se you don't you you divine secrets. You know, you, you know divination or however that is. You like to figure it out. You are like the detective. So the thing is, you know, you may not like to share your own secrets, but you like to figure out and find other people's secrets. So there is going to be some information or something, and it's going to be around. Um, I think I ha I said that it. I didn't have a date on it, so I think it was somewhere from the 28th to the 4th where there will be secrets or there will be communication that is actually let out, revealed. I do feel that it's going to be one of those, oh my goodness, I didn't quite think that was going to happen type of energy. So here we are, too much going on at once, the need to make a decision, consider a more playful approach. This is very, again, this is earth, so this is very grounded type of energy. My thought for you, again, to, you know, being a water baby, you know, even though you're not, you're not a cancer, they're the moon babies, but water, the moon does affect your energy quite a bit. It affects water energy, very scientific type of energy. So do the things to keep yourself very grounded, because I kind of feel like, again, you, you could feel a little bit swept away by the waves, Okay. Here we go. Next card up. The Knight of Water. Knight of Water. And there, I actually feel good with this. Now, you know, Knights, I told you, was a fire sign. So water, again, is your sign, a Cancer and Pisces. 
and it's very fluid, very emotional. There is a spiritual component to it too. So this could be a very strong relationship um, developing with you and maybe another romantic partner. Um, I don't mean another as in you have one already. I just mean in a romantic way. Um, you know, if you are already in a committed relationship, it could be a stronger bonding between the two of you and that you actually are starting to work together to build a build something that might actually, again, I feel this expansion. I feel this, I don't know, is that somebody wants, you know, I don't know, is this expanding the family? It could be that too. I feel expansion. I feel that this is a committed relationship. There's a lot going on. You just might feel swept up. You might just kind of go along with go along for the ride. And I feel that maybe that's what you need to do. Just kind of like, you know, I kind of it, it you know, I know that it's not necessarily like you're on a surfboard because the surfboard comes back to shore. It's just kind of like maybe you're on like a like on a river or what, not quite the rapids, but not necessarily not like the rapids either. I feel that there's just kind of this wave, this water just pulling and pushing you forward. And sometimes you may say, I want to get off, but at the same time, I'm going to tell you, sit back on your raft, put your hands behind your head and just look at the sun and enjoy the ride. Okay. Nights again, very directional, going after what they want and you have water. You also have that fire underlying energy, too. So emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals, the need to balance emotions, an invitation to a social event. So this is really busy, busy energy. And remember, my relationship, when I talk about relationships, it could be your work, job, career, personal, intimate, interpersonal, family, or home. I do feel that this has more of a personal component to it. But it could be something that you really just feel very strongly about, too. So if it's strong about your career, it could definitely um, be something with your career. Okay, your last card here, reversed again, Awakening. I love Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel is the divine messenger. You could be hearing some news that makes you kind of look at things a little bit differently. We have a 1 there, so we have the 1 new beginnings. It could be a 10. 10, transition. 2 is, again, that decisions, decisions, decisions. It's high. You know, so the awakening, the, the awakening, awakening um, is kind of looking at things a little differently, kind you know, taking a little step back. And, you know, with all, you know, I know that this is earth energy, but with all this overwhelming expansion type of pushing you forward, you might need to kind of ground your, again, go back, ground yourself. Um, you know, get your feet on, you know, get your feet on some, you know, stable earth and just take a look at what it is you want, where it is you want to go. I think, I feel really good about the night of water. I feel really good about the relationship, whatever that is. And again, it could be if you're very committed to your job or your career, it could be something that you're just putting all your focus and all your energy into that. Okay. Okay. So, but this, but Gabriel generally brings news also. So, you might be hearing news. Now you can add it together. Three. One plus two is three. Very celestial number. And also there is a power in three. Look at things from a different perspective. A temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself. So sometimes when things are moving really quickly around you, sometimes the best thing to do is just stop and not do anything. And just let, just kind of watch and see. Okay. Oh, okay. Ooh. Solar plexus chakra. We have that three energy again. So let's see. So we have a couple of twos repeating. Now we have a three. And if we add that together, it's a three also. Let's see what we have. Now chakras are energy sources. There's seven. There's more than seven. But we're going to talk about the seven. Anyway, they start with your root or your base chakra. And that's like how you grew up. Your, your values, how, you know, um, do, are you afraid? Are you, you know, did you grow up in a very tyrannical home or was it very nurturing and loving? You know, and how did you react to either of those? Okay, then we go to our sacral. Sacral has a lot of, um, mm, you know, sexuality type of energy. It's kind of like how we relate to others, um, others that we are attracted to or that might be attracted to us also. Now, the solar plexus does have a little bit, you know, it kind of goes between the sacral to solar plexus, also this 
Solar plexus is about our integrity, our what we will allow, what we will contract with, what we, you know, our moral contract, our soul contract, you know, those things that we might do that we might, you know, we might say, ooh, didn't feel right about that. So, and, but that also connects really strongly with sacral too. So solar plexus is about integrity. Solar plexus is about doing what is personally, what you believe to be the right thing. Um, sometimes people will use solar plexus as, you know, well, I lied because the outcome was worth the lie. And that, you know, it's like, okay, that goes against your karma. I'm sorry. You know, the thing is, you know, that, remember, we're in Sat, you know, Saturn with Aquarius. I know, I know. And, but, you know, reality versus illusion. And then that thing going on with Pisces and Neptune and Mercury. So, you know, it, the best thing to do is to be honest. Now, then we go to the heart. So the heart is, of course, your emotions. Heart to, so your root to your heart are more your naturals. Your heart to your crown become more of your supernatural energies. So let's see what we have here for our next card here. Ah, nine. So we do have some nine energy, so three and nine. And these are, this is also divisible by three. So not just the material harvest, material harvest. There's a completion energy to nines. There is kind of this, this is where we need to go. This is, this has a lot to do with this two of earth. This has a lot to being where you need to be. There is, you know, material harvest is when you have that job that provides for you, but you also like that job. So there is that, you know, that, that feeling good with what you have and what you've accomplished also. Your next card is, we have a three again. So we have three, nine, and three. Interesting energy there. Those might be some really important um, numbers for you. And remember, we have this 12 up here too. So, you know, recognition and awards, uh, rewards. I keep saying awards, rewards. This is, you know, being, um, you know, you know, there's a lot of um, justice type of energy here. You know, I know that um, we don't have the justice card, but there's a lot of, you know, karmic justice type of energy coming too. So Aries, Aries looks like there, you know, I, or feels very justice or very karmic justice type of energy coming towards you in a positive way. Stay in your integrity. This is so, so important. Stay in your integrity. Do what is right, and things will fall into place in a really, really good way. I feel expansion for you. You know, I know. I'm going to keep saying that, right? Right. Here we go. Now, words of advice from Osha Zentero. Words of advice. Here we go. We have one, two, and three. So there is a lot of three you know, that three, the nine, the three, eh, well, I'll let you deal with that. Look that up on the internet. Here we go. And nothing looks reversed if I am reading this correctly. Here we go. First card is control. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Many times over, my Scorpios, this is kind of a, you know, well, I don't know, is this a warning? Is this a, you know, let things be a little more organic, let things happen. The only thing and the only person and only whatever you can control, and even then we can only do a little bit of it, is control ourselves, control our responses, control our emotions. Um, you've got really this, I mean, this is something, I think this is something to, for you to really watch out for. Watch out if you're trying to control a situation, if you're trying to control another person. Watch out for that. Watch out if someone's trying to control you also. So, you know, conversely, this is something to, you know, again, this, you know, stand in your integrity. Do what you know to be right. Here we go. Control, I'm kind of feeling a little like, it's kind of making me a little nauseated in my stomach, so I don't know if that's you trying to control the outcome or a situation, especially when you've got some really good stuff around you. The control can, de can um, um, what, what a, derail you. The control, if this is from you and you're trying to make situation into what you want it to be, it can derail all of this really positive stuff. Here we go. Next card is... Guidance, and we have a three again. So three, now this doesn't have a number on it, so there we can't do that, but we have a three. Again, you know, Archangel Gabriel, 
divine guidance. Reach out, reach out, really reach out, because this is this has. I feel this has some really dark energy. Some so be careful with that. Now, we like to see. We like to think that we have more lighter energy than we have darker energy, and many of us do. So we have to be careful about when this dark energy tries to get in. You know, sometimes it tries to get in through places that we don't even know it's trying to get in. So, again, I've been talking about this anyway, but I'll we'll bring in every day. I try to at least say to my higher power, and so you do this to whoever this is to you, you know, cover me with your cloak of protection. Because this this kind of gives me a little bit of the um, heebie-jeebies. I, I just don't feel good with this. I don't feel good with this, my Scorpios. And I don't know if this is you or if this is someone coming against you. I don't feel good. I feel lovely with this one. I mean, look at this. This is a lovely card, Divine Guidance. Now again, angelic energy, positive. Now you have to also know, remember, there are dark angels. So you want to make sure that you have the lighter angels. Your next card here, traveling. Well, I always feel motion for you, but this could be, this is just things opening up, awakening, traveling, going, you know, going to some place, you know, things, you know, maybe this is your spirit. And also too, I don't know who this might be, but if you, you know, make sure that if you do astro, astro, astro traveling, astral traveling, that you, um, that you, you know, work, learn a little bit about that. You really, um, the theories are that you really can't get lost because you're tethered to yourself. But sometimes the re-entry is really hard, okay? So you need to kind of know how to let go. And I don't know who's working with that. Um, be careful of where you go, though. Be careful of where you go with this. Because sometimes you can go to places that you just shouldn't be at, okay? So somebody, I think, is investigating this more so. And But at the same time, I do feel expansion, and I've always, I always feel movement for my Scorpios. You know that. I feel, you know, you can't sit still. You can't sit still, or, well, maybe you can sit still, but your brain is always going somewhere. Okay, let's go on. We are going to take this here. Oops, that card wants to stay, so we're going to let that stay. One, we're going to have here, one, two, and three. So, We'll put these over there. Let's see what we have. Now, this is the one that wanted to stay, right? Right. First card is Five of Gabriel. Fives have some change energy to it. Positive, negative, neutral. Not always easy. Gabriel is fire energy. We know what fire energy is all about. This is some challenges. This is some of these, uh, you know, I'm just going to say, I feel, you know, this control is not an easy, um, it's not easy energy with me. It's not easy energy. But the five of Gabriel is a challenge you can re resolve. Withdraw from the drama of others. Have patience with yourself and those around you. Your next card, reversed. Three of Raphael. I love this. I love, so we have again those three, that three energy, right? Yeah, we have some more three energy here. Raphael is your energy. It is water energy. This is about celebration. This is about, there is such positive expansion. There is like weddings, marriage, all this positive energy going on. It doesn't mean that you're going to get married, but it does, there is happy announcements. Reason to celebrate a community of friends Happy announcements regarding relationships or children. Your next card is solutions. Okay, so we have a one and a four. One again, we've talked about that, or a ten. Fours have stability to it and also organization to it. Add it together, we come to another five, so there's some more change coming for you. So we have Gabriel, we have Zedkiel here. And this is basically... This, this is, again, you know, if this, if this is you, this control is you, this is what needs to be done if you want to, if you don't want to block a lot of this positive energy. Anyway, so success that comes from objective compromise, self-control, and patience, forgiving and healing energy. And remember, forgiving heals you. Forgiving helps you, Okay. Because when you when you hold on to anger, oh, and my Scorpios, you can hold on to anger. You've got good memories. It's only you that's really hurting yourself. You're not hurting the other person. They either don't know or they don't care. So, he, you know, forgiving helps you, okay? It helps break you from that bondage. Now, 
I love these cards. These are Guardian Angel, Radley Valentine again. They're very kind, gentle cards. I can't use them necessarily for a full reading because wordy, but this is reversed. Here we are. Positive recognition. So we have a 19 here. So this would have been one of the Archangel energies, but congratulations. Your plans have worked out perfectly, and now it's your time to shine. I told you, expansion. This is your time. Brilliant new ideas will present themselves to you, and success is all but assured. Express yourself openly and honestly. Remember, I talk about that. Um, knowing all, knowing that those surrounding you are trustworthy. Be open to unexpected opportunities. Love that for you. Love that. Love that. Love that. That's why I do like these. But you don't. You know, they're very kind, gentle, um, and a lot of times. What I've been finding is they wrap up the reading perfectly. Now, let's see what crystal or energy is good for my Scorpios. Here we are. Uh, let's go here. This is reversed. Fire. Fire. Oh, my goodness. Well, you can't carry fire with you. So, But you can burn candles if you're in a safe spot. Um, you know, very, you know, Aries is the fire energy. So it seems like Aries is going to do some really good stuff for you. Anyway, you can wear some really strong colors, things like that. Fire is passionate, creation. Okay, travel, courage. So interesting stuff. I do love the positive recognition for you, my Scorpios. It's about time. It's about time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the reading. I really do. It was a lot of fun. Now, if you did enjoy, or even if you didn't, like, none of the others, like, share, subscribe. It does help, and I thank you. As always, my Scorpios, please know that you are loved. Stay shining, and be blessed.